Something's going to happen. Something wonderful. G'day fans and welcome to another exciting episode of Talk Nerdy to Me. Unlike last week where zero people had signed in at the very start of the show, we've already got someone joined in right this very millisecond and there will be others uh, joining us very, very soon. We're actually going to move on to something completely different now. We're a show that covers a lot of different things in pop culture with science fiction and fantasy and all the rest. But now we've got superheroes and now we've got the super super villains, in fact. So, yeah, P.S., you want to have a bit of a... I'm not going to crack any jokes, but we're going to crack a joke about the Joker. So what do you want to say, son? We are. If you want to pop up the visual, because I've got some oh, visuals for this, just to make life a little bit easier. Remember, uh, you can't stop. Yep, exactly. Go for it. Yep. Um, look, we always talk about the heroes generally, but we never really talk in depth about the villains. And I think it's time we talk in depth about the villains. Now, we're going to talk a little bit about... Uh, who the best on-screen performance was uh, in terms of the, the five that we, we get to see uh, in a second. Um, and before that, I want to preface it with we don't want to, we're not talking necessarily about the mental health of the character, um, not the actors, uh, and it's just their performances in the, in the film. So it's got nothing to do with, with anything else, okay? Uh, because we could get so in-depth into these characters that we could lose where we're sort of going to go with this. So the Joker, who has no real origin, uh, there's been no canon origin created for the Joker, yet in each of the movies we've sort of seen something. Um, and we'll get to that in a second. Wasn't there uh, a moment, uh, he was like the Red Hood or whatever? Wasn't that supposed to be an origin? He was in one of the graphic novels. I can't think what it's called. It was, but, yeah, it kind of, kind of still isn't. Uh, to my knowledge, my understanding is there's still no official... Um, because Under the Red Hood was a version of it. I'm just, I'm actually just recalling the story as we go now. Uh, but it wasn't, to my knowledge, a, a full um, history of the character. Because mm. he, uh, he was like a pale comedian and all the rest of it, and he was a skinny guy, and he lost his wife, and the gangsters beat her up, and he had to go and rob a, a factory with the Red Hood and fell into the vat and all the rest of it, and that's at the end he became the Joker. So whether that's a canon version or an interpretation um i guess is open to uh, speculation i don't really know i thought you might know so uh, there you go yeah well look as far as i'm aware there's been no definitive answer to his origin you know there's been possibilities and each of these movies and and live action versions of the joker um have a version of of his origin these are some of the quotes from the actual characters in the films uh some of them you'll you'll know very easily some of them are brand new um but yeah, is it's a bit sort of strange in a way. Uh, the animated versions, well, there have been many of those since the '60s, since the, the Super Friends. But we're not talking about any of these guys either, because uh, my preference and a definitive Joker is the, um, the animated series from '92 to '95. That's the version I think that is closest to the comic book version of the character. So here are the five characters or the five actors in question okay in no particular order and you'll notice i've put in cesar romero uh there is heath ledger there's joaquin phoenix there's jack nicholson and there is jared leto uh and i'm happy for you guys out there in in the intranets to uh jump in with your your thing about um these characters because we, we want to have a bit of a debate as who the best one was and and who was closer to um the version that probably is more the comic book style sort of canon. And Dags has a different version of, of who he thinks the best Joker is compared to me, which, you know, for Batman fans. <laughs> I like that. You had to think about that for a second, didn't you? Yeah, I did actually, yeah. Because um, you have a definitive one and I have a definitive one and they're both different. So, And that's good because we can have this discussion. So we're going to start off with, uh, with Cesar Romero, who was just a fun joker for the most part. Now, because of the 60s series, he was uh, written in that sort of way and it was it was written in, in three different levels, one for the kids, one for the teens, one for the adults. Uh, but he certainly had what the joker sort of consists of. Uh, he had the silliness 
and he had the psychoticness. Psychoticness is that a word? Anyway, it we'll now. see. It is now. Um, so he sort of he sort of worked on both of those things, but he was never more one than the other. Any words on this guy, dude? Um, I do like this. Has a classic quote uh, from him in the '66 movie where uh, Reginald Schmidtlap walks up to him and he goes, I say, Stuart, your face has the most ghastly pallor. Are you getting enough of the good old sea air? As in air, sea air. And uh, the Joker responds by saying, I'm afraid my duties mainly keep me undercover, sir. <laughs> uh, look, I, 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 look, it's the first on-screen representation of the character, and I guess everything was judged uh, by how he performed. Uh, it was always very funny because, for those who didn't know, Cesar Romero didn't refuse to shave off his moustache, so they just put the makeup straight over the top. Um, look, it worked for the show. Um, I would argue that uh, yeah, they had to sort of lighten it up a fair bit because of the TV series and couldn't make him as dark as probably where he would have gone. I think had you've taken him exactly as he looks and tried to make him a much darker character, it wouldn't have worked. I think you needed a bit more of the craziness in the physical appearance because he looks so prim and proper and white and all his clothes and whatever else. So, um, But in terms of a visual representation from what the comic, uh, you know, at face value from the 60s, yeah, he seems to be pretty spot on, but I'm not too au fait with the characterisation uh, myself. Yeah, but I find it interesting is the fact that his smile isn't, it's more painted on than, than mm. crafted into his skin. Uh, mm. So when he's sort of is, is being beaten or he frowns, it actually doesn't stay up like a smile, it goes down. And I well, find that the whole clown prince of crime thing that's the thing. So it is the pushing the whole yeah. clown concept in, uh, in, in a lot further along. Yeah, and he did have, I don't know if you knew this dude, but uh, the laugh that he does in that series so for three years he did the laugh of the joker and he high pitched and all that and apparently that became his normal laugh after that hmm, okay. so it basically it turned him into that sort of that laugh turned him in stayed with him so that's a bit sort of life weird and sad at the same sort of, yeah well exactly yeah. Right. he would have been fun at parties you would have just wanted to crack jokes at the guy just to hear him laugh and go hey there he is <laughs> there he is yeah. So, but yeah. I, I dare say that he was probably a more serious actor than, than this, but uh, he did play this role very, very well. And he is pretty yeah. close to uh, what I would class as as the comic book type characters. Um, I mean, but again, like we said, lighter because of the time period. Yeah, it wouldn't surprise me if he got the gig on the show thing and I'll be, be three or four episodes and I'll be out the door and suddenly becomes a huge hit and he just he stayed on for the, for the role. So there you go. Very good. All right, uh, and probably the, the one of the episodes where um, you know what it is—it's very hard finding pictures with these two, with Batman and the Joker in all of these together. Uh, there are certain scenes that you sort of get. Now, this was probably what I class as the jump the shark type moment because they're both surfing, and it's a contest of surfing. It just got ridiculous. So yeah. that was scene three. Um, um, well, there anybody, any uh, cosplayers out there doing the Batman suit with those yellow shorts? Because uh, you could do it and get away with it. And people go, what the hell? What's with the shorts? Go, hey, man, it's from an episode. So it's legit, all right? And so, you need a surfboard. But check out Commissioner Gordon on the left-hand side in his hat and um, Chief yeah. O'Hara behind in, in his cool space-age yeah. sunnies. <laughs> yeah. Terrible. Um, all right. Next, we have the first full version uh, Joker, first feature film version uh jack nicholson now truly truly an outstanding performance um the makeup i had trouble telling at one point whether or not he's taking the makeup on or off especially when he's in that scene uh with vicky in in the the flugenheim museum mm -hmm. uh for those who don't know what the museum's called uh where he's actually she throws the water at his face he goes oh i'm melting i'm melting and you can't tell if it's if it's if the paint if the white is the fake or the skin is the fake color now you find the white is the real color and he's put flesh tone over the top of it and that's the reason why it's melting yeah. off yeah. I know, but the, on, for the sequence that he is on the tv i've taken my makeup off let's see if you can take off yeah. in reality he's actually put the makeup on so uh yeah, yeah so he's got the white color it's used to form yeah. yep but the first few times you see it, you go well how, which one is it so but he was a a, a good character because he had a sense of funny and serious now funny in the sense that in this scene he turns around and he's about to turn around to the batman and say um uh i'm trying to think of the start of the line uh i don't i was a kid when i killed your parents 
Um, and then he goes to put on some glasses. He goes, you wouldn't hit a guy with glasses, would you? And Batman punches him anyway. So, yeah. again, seriousness with, with comedic element. Um, mm-hmm. Because, like in the comic books, the Joker would turn around and, and shoot someone and then slap them with the fish. Mm. You know, it's weird sort of stuff like that. And I think that's why Jack Nicholson worked. You know, even when he got thrown over the edge and he died and everything, the giggle box that he had that was going eh, 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 mm-hmm. at the end was still just a part of him being funny, being that prankster. Um, and my favourite scene in this is where he turns around and, and zaps the guy in the meeting. Oh, yeah. And, you know, he's got the, the, the ring buzzer on and you go, well, that's technically exactly what he's meant to be doing. So to me, I think he's probably the best representation film-wise Oh, my turn. Uh, yeah, I, yeah, my turn. Um, no, it, it didn't work for me. Uh, I thought he worked excellent as Jack Napier. I had no problems with that as, at all. But I thought as the Joker, um, I mean, it was great for the, it was like first proper cinematic uh, representation of the character with nothing else to sort of compare it with. Um, and I guess it's only as the years went on and other versions came out, I go, you could look back and go, all right, it worked for the time and it worked for the film, which is great. But uh, I found, I thought he was miscast. Uh, it just, for me, had the wrong look, the wrong sound, the wrong. He looks. He was actually I can consider too old. Um, and it's. And I mean, I've never been a Joker favorite anyway, so I'm probably the bit worst person to ask this question. So, but I found that better ones have come since then. I mean, it's kind of funny. Sometimes you can have a franchise where all these things happen, all these characters come and go, and you can say, you know what, all these other ones are okay, but you go back to the first one, which is the best, Superman being the obvious example. Christopher Reeve, can't beat it, right? Full stop, end of story. All these other ones have come, but you still go back to him. Uh, and with Batman, you can still go back to Michael Keaton and all the rest of it. But with the Jokers, some of the ones that came after him a decade or two decades, three decades later, I think have sort of like surpassed what Jack Nicholson did. Um, and I don't know, I just, it just, I found it a bit sort of, didn't work for me. It was a bit silly, but that's that's me personally. But he was never my favourite character, so um, it really didn't matter either way. And uh, if the audiences bought it and it worked for them, good luck to them. So um, it's, it's good to see. But, uh, yes, yeah, so, yeah, it's definitely not the best in my opinion. Mm. Yeah. Well, look, I, I like I said, I think he was the best. Yeah, you're right, he was too old. Uh, but I still think that kind of worked, you know. Okay. He wasn't the joke of that long either, it, weeks maybe maybe a month or so so um yeah it, he, did have, he did have some very good lines though there was some very 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 good oh, yeah. yeah definitely so there's no doubt about that yeah all right heath ledger and christian bale and dark knight or the batman begins uh, trilogy um and when we go on to talking about this as a full thing one day you'll hear the fact that i hate the third movie uh but that's another story um i'll let you start with this one dude um, as I said, just as I just said, actually, uh, the Joker is not my favourite character, but in terms of a portrayal, um, this one I think was right up there. Um, it was something different, it was something unique. I really liked the fact that they explained the scars on the mouth, the reason why he has the smile, it had nothing to do with falling into bats or any of that sort of rubbish. Um, I thought that was quite good. The fact he was very dishevelled all the time. So you compare him to the previous two Jokers who were always well presented, I me, mean, Jack Napier was really, really pedantic about the way he always looked in his suit and he was always tired. He was always very schmickeroo. And I guess the comic version was probably like that as well. And I guess this mm-hmm. version turned all that completely on a, on its head, saying, well, he dresses really, really well, but he has a very disheveled, this is like this version, has a very disheveled look. And I think that's a representation of the character's inner thinking, saying, well, I have to look good, but my brain's completely skew if. And the way it was portrayed in the film, I really love the fact that whenever he mostly appeared, you had that really just high-pitched whine, not even music. Like, I thought it was to say whenever he was appearing, I thought that was really, really good. And I felt it worked well because his interaction with Batman was better than what happened with the eighteen uh, with uh, Nicholson and Keaton. I thought these two guys worked really well. There was a real chemistry between them. And um, I like the fact that he actually did have a very dark side darker than what we saw previously than, uh, say, what Jack Nicholson had. So then the fact that he was prepared to just kill people left, right and centre and, and just do his own thing without any second thought. And the fact that he was really an agent of chaos and he's lying about saying, you know, look what he did to this city just with some gasoline and a bullet or two, whatever the quote was. And I thought, well, that's actually completely true. He's showing how, and this ironically is how today's world is, with all the technology we have in the world and all the computers and the smartphones and the internet and all the rest of it, one virus just brings everything completely undone. And you could almost argue that this was a precursor. Uh, his version of the Joker was a precursor to that because 
he could just say he's an agent of chaos and he proved that and I, I thought that was actually really really impressive because it didn't take much to destroy the order of things and the way he was presented in doing that uh was uh really really cool and if i was going to have any uh, any criticisms it was the fact that the joker in these these uh, films always have henchmen everywhere it's like well you know where they all come from and why they all stick around if they know that their boss is a little bit looney tunes but uh it can be killed off any time but uh yeah, I thought it was, um, yeah, I was very, very impressed. And I think it's what makes the movie. <clears throat> See, I didn't think it was that good. And yet uh, Hollywood deemed it to be because Heath won a, an Academy Award pros posthumously, which, uh, yeah, I can never say that word properly, uh, which yeah. I think shouldn't have occurred. And it See, was only because. Yeah, the difference is you have a history with the Joker from the comics, right? Mm -hmm. And I don't. I just don't know straight from media, from t film and TV. So I guess our perspectives are already completely different because you see things from a different element of history, whereas I just see screen and the comics mean nothing to me. So I guess that's a uh, – I'm just sorry for cutting you off, but I just wanted to put that in. Anyway, continue. Yeah, look, it's because the, the Joker is meant to be psychotic and funny, and Heath wasn't funny in this film. Yeah, exactly. Like there was no, there was no joking. That, that, essentially the only thing he did was oh do you want to see a pencil disappear you know mm. and that was that was the only joke he did um he said oh, i don't plan anything but hang on a second it takes a lot of planning to put to blow up two tugboats and all this sort of stuff so that's where that part of the joker didn't work for me he was scheming all the time and that was that was way way too much scheming for one man um and you mentioned henchman and yeah this is i think the only version uh, apart from the new Joker film, that he doesn't actually have henchmen. He does everything pretty much by himself. Like he oh, walks he into a, the scene. Yeah, he, he does have a few because remember they're going to have like aggressive tryouts, um, aggressive yeah. and then he has the pool cues and they've got to beat each other to death yeah. and stuff like that. So but that's, but that, they're not his at that time. He was pretty much just trying to get whoever. Um, and henchmen just are in it for the money. No other thing than that really. But, um, yeah, he pretty much – he did bring probably the the – better version of being a dark character you know like he said to the cop when he was just before this scene where he says i really know how your friends are and how strong and tough sort of thing you know that's why i use a knife you know so he really he didn't turn around and shoot someone from 50 feet away he wasn't sort of like that he was really in your face as a character um the only other funny line i think in the film is just as batman is behind him in this scene actually smacks his head on the table and he goes you don't hit me in the head you start with a hand or something first because then you get all grog and you don't know what you're saying mm. um but it's also because you know batman's still learning and and the joker has come out of nowhere essentially rather than being created like in the 89 film batman kind of creates him here he's no one we mm. don't know if the story of his scars are true we don't know what his history is um and all that sort of stuff so look in terms of his character it's it's up there but it's not my favorite in terms of uh film versions fair enough uh in recent times ben affleck and jared leto um i gotta say i hated this one i yeah, just the... think it sorry, go. was too much it was, sorry it was, it was just too much he was he was too much of a, a mob boss than anything else he wasn't that joker-esque in any fashion yeah the problem when you have a character that's been portrayed a couple of times already and then suddenly you've got to portray it again uh, and i think jared had said that he was really going to be struggling with this because um the previous performances of the character have been so iconic and it's like well what do you do that's done differently and i guess ultimately it was going to be a tough act to follow and maybe it was just too too tough so um i wouldn't Oh, I wouldn't necessarily class him as the weakest of the representations, but he's certainly not the strongest by any stretch. And uh, and uh, I, you sort of got to hand, like feel pity for the guy. It's like, well, someone has to play the character. So um, yeah. Anyway, so but it is what it is. It came, it went, and we move on. Yeah, and and the the hardest part about it is his the the time he spent on screen was not that long. Like this mm. is from. Um, uh, Suicide Squad, and he's got probably five minutes, maybe ten if you're real lucky, of screen time, and there's not a lot of interaction. Uh, and it's very hard to find a picture with him and Batman. The only one I could find, which you wouldn't see anything, is he's driving his his car, and Batman's on the roof trying to stop him. So, um, and that's when he's grabbed Harley to go through that. But 
look, yes, it is hard. And but it's the same with Batman, though, because you've got these other guys who are coming up through the ranks and have to create a different persona mm. from Batman. This is equally as hard. I'm not saying it's easy. So, um, you know, kudos to the guys playing the roles. But at the same time, this one, I think the writing is what failed the character more than anything else. So. Yeah, it, it would be difficult playing a character in a, sh in a show when you sort of think from the outset, uh, yeah, I'm not going to cut the mustard in comparison to everybody else. I'm going to be compared. I mean, you will be compared against the other guys. And you might think, you know what, uh, I'm doing the best I can, but uh, I know that in the end I'm going to get panned for it or I just it just isn't going to work. But uh, you're there to do a job, you do the job, and you pack up, go home afterwards, and you go, you know what, That's, I did what I needed to do. So that was it. And Come yet, on. funnily enough, I find found that, Watching the 60s TV series, you had Frank Gorshin playing the Riddler and then you had John Aston come in for season three. And yet their, their roles were almost identical. They basically copied each other. So, or, well, you know, yeah. John Aston um, followed Frank. But, you know, you sort of went, if you can do it there, maybe there's a similarity, maybe there's a difference. I don't know. Um, yeah. Three different cat women were, were all slightly different at the same time. Mm -hmm. So uh, there we go. Um, and the last one, Joaquin Phoenix. I did not like this film at all. It had, in terms of being the Joker, I don't feel it followed through. It's almost like Halle Berry's Catwoman to me. You know, it feels like it's, it's. they want to put it in the franchise. They class it as, as a Batman film sort of thing, but it's, it's nothing like it. Well... As it turned out, um, if you read it from the, the writer or is the director, it might be both of them, they said he is Joker but not necessarily the Joker, the idea being that they've kept it very ambiguous and said that because uh, so you, you see Bruce Wayne in the movie and he's very, very young, and the idea being that somewhere down the track when Bruce Wayne is getting older, someone else imitates this guy. So this guy isn't that Joker, and it's sort of splitting hairs a little bit, and you can make of it what you will. And, of course, if you didn't know this, you just take it at face value that he's meant to be the Joker. But apparently he's not. They've uh, deliberately kept it ambiguous. And uh, that would have uh, a very interesting forethought because, as you know, in the movie, it has a big following. You know, dare I say, it's almost like real-world events. And um, and down the track, yeah, someone goes in when they're a bit like go a bit crazy. They go, oh, I remember this dude from you know all these years ago. He was dressed as this clown, and he just committed these crimes or whatever. I'll just replicate him. And uh, apparently, that's what the uh, the story is. So uh, there you go. But anyway, you can met the film with this guy as it is. So well, you can you just ignore what I just said if you <laughs> if you want to? <laughs> so uh, there yeah. you go. Um, he. <laughs> Look, I, I didn't find the film to be that good in a lot of senses. There was a lot of um, bits that didn't sort of work for me, um, especially the scene where he's on the on the talk show with uh, Robert De Niro and all of a sudden he just shoots him. It's like uh, it, it was too much and it didn't it didn't feel like it fit the scene. You know, it just for me, it just didn't work. So, um, yeah, not who I would put up as – actually, I'd probably put him down the very bottom. You know, just the simple fact that, but not having not known what you just said, though, you know, being the, you know, if, if I had known that, maybe it's a lot of different, but it's still not that great. And uh, one way of looking at it is to say, just pretend for the moment the film isn't called Joker, it's called something else. Uh, I can't think of a name off the top of me, just a random name, right? And he's not wearing the makeup, he's just a normal dude, okay? But the film follows the exact same path, right? Once again, it's almost to a degree echoing real world events. Um, and he goes on the talk show as himself right and he because he's knows no clowns and none of this sort of makeup and he follows through the entire process that would make a completely different film altogether because it's the persona of who the character is as the clown that is like there's two different individuals you've got the real i can't remember the character's name but um you've got the real person and then you've got the um the artificial version or the or the other um, he's like the split personality thing going on, like how he has all the memories of being with the girl and all the rest of it. And of course, that's all fictitious. It never happened. And I thought that was actually really interesting. So from a psychological perspective, it's a far bigger in-depth look um, at sort of mental illness and how the human mind works than any of the other films could have tackled because obviously this dude is the, is the central character. And if you look at it from that point of view only, it's actually pretty strong stuff and it actually works very, very well. But if you look at it from the angle of saying, oh, this meant to be the Joker from the Batman franchise, yeah, you're right, it kind of doesn't. So, yeah. Um, yeah, there's there's two different ways of looking at it. But it's still a tour de force 
no matter how you look at it from um, yeah, well, Joaquin Phoenix. So yeah. yeah. Oh, look, I agree with you. If it was, if he didn't have the makeup on, yeah, that would have been a great film. It would have been a holy crap type of film. Well, it would have been different. Yeah, yeah that's for sure. Yeah. So yeah. Um, similar to. Um, April. Just quickly, just quickly, April for me. It's actually the UK. It'd be in the middle of the day over there. So uh, good to see you. I mean, you don't know who she is, but I do. So good day, April. Good to see you. Anyway, continue on and good night to Robert. So there you go. All yeah. right. Um, right. It's like the, the series Gotham. If you took out all the Batman references, it was a good cop series, but it just mm -hmm. was a terrible Batman series. So yeah. well, from yeah, my see, anyway. you and I see eye to eye differently on that. And of course, you never saw the episodes where they did introduce a Joker type character. Not call Joker. They never mentioned him, called him Joker on screen at all. But he had that sort of mannerisms and all the rest of it. And he could have actually, I don't even know who the actor was, because he played like a duo. So he played uh, twin brothers to himself. And that was a really, really good representation of the character. Very nice. I don't know who this guy even was. It's like, mate, I tell you what, he's, he's just really, really like has a fantastic facial features that, that work. But they never called him Joker. And I thought that was very, very clever. But for all intents and purposes, he was meant to be. So, um, yeah, and say good day, Angie. I was a fan of Gotham as well. Towards the end, it got a little bit bit off the off the rails a bit. But uh, overall, um, yeah, so anyway, uh, that's how uh, I sort of interpreted it. So there you go. Yeah. Very good. So, so out of those, personally, my favourite is Jack Nicholson. Yours is, is Heath Ledger. What does yeah. everyone else think? If they're, providing you've all seen all five films, if not, um, tell us which one's your favourite Joker is and... Well, try and, Colin, try and convince me otherwise. <laughs> well, Colin, Colin's already said that Cesar Romero was definitely his because he grew up with the Joker, uh, which yeah. is fair enough. Sometimes you're young and you get impression, uh, you get the impressions from from those shows. They stick with it, and that's fair enough too. Um, and oh yeah, see, so someone said he. I'm not too sure what that person is. In case you don't know, you need to sign up the Streamyard so we can see your names. And if you choose not to, that's entirely up to yourself. But you need to put your name in the comment, otherwise we won't know who that is. So someone has said Heath. Uh, there you go. Both Heath and, okay, Susie, you said both Heath and Jack. Well, that's an interesting combination. Ah, uh, oh, thank you, Daniel. Yes, Jerome. Yeah, I could not remember the character's name at all. And he played Jerome and his brother, who was whoever. And, of course, the guy plays two different characters right, who look identical. And it's just, it's it's really fascinating when you see actors do that, play uh, like a split personality. So they've got one guy here, one guy there, and they're both the same actor, and it's just absolutely fantastic. So there you go. Oh, Jared has said Jack, so there you go. Mark Hamill, IS, of course, from the animated series. We're talking about live yeah. action at the moment only, Ange. So, uh, yeah, otherwise, if you include uh, animated series, then the animated series wins hands down, really. Yeah, and, so, yeah, uh, hands down. Yeah, look, Mark Hamill, Mark Hamill. Yeah, exactly right. So, yeah. But, well, look, uh, I, think, I think at the end of the day, it's, it's all different and they all have a, a purpose. Uh, look, I'm not so sure, like we said about that, um, the last film, the Joker film, I'm not so sure about how that works but that's fine um in terms of heath ledger yeah i can see what they tried to do but at the same time the characterization didn't work for me so and i like for me, the, sorry i've got to stop i keep cutting you off sorry keep going yep i was gonna say otherwise it's, it's jack for me yeah i like the fact that it was really it was just very different they took a completely different angle with it and uh and I, rather than just saying oh we're just going to copy whoever like someone mentioned here about uh, I can't remember who it was. Someone mentioned about how the fact that John Aston had to play the Riddler exactly the same as mm -hmm. Frank Gorshin even had the same costume. And I guess that's an example where you just replace the actor but keep the same character. Whereas I guess when you look at Jack Nicholson and Heath Ledger, they're just completely different uh, in portrayals of the same character. And I quite like that. So uh, there you go. But uh, yes, Jared, yeah, yeah, Phoenix was very good actually. So, um, but that's the kind of the funny thing about Joker the film. It's not the kind of movie you go, you know what? I'm having a fantastic night on a Wednesday night. After I'm hanging out with the nerds, I'm going to put on Joker because it makes me feel so much happier. I don't think so. So, uh, very good stuff. So, uh, yes, yeah, so it looks like a bit of yeah, everybody's Mark Hamill. I know everybody's picked Mark Hamill, but that is from the animated series, in case you didn't know that, fans. So, um, there you go. So, uh, it was a bit of a, a mixture of bodies See? out there. Technically, even though it's animated, he still was in the movie Mask of the Phantasm. So I, I could have that. said feature film. So yeah. technically he was there, but uh, I stuck with live action for a reason. Anyway, good to very see everyone's opinions. Did you find, just very quickly before we move on, surprisingly, because there were two serials, two Batman serials made in the 40s, are you surprised that they didn't use the Joker for either of them? Uh, a little bit. No, I'm surprised they didn't use any of the characters. Uh, same with the Superman serials. They use Superman and the Mole Men and nothing to do with Lex Luthor or or, or any of those guys either. So, um, 
Not sure. Yeah, right. I think I think I think well look, I think it was just to see to get the character on screen. You know, the Batmobile was a, a black car, wasn't anything special. Um but no, I don't had, think I'd Here you go. You don't know. Because you had mastermind bad guys in both those serials and you thought well, you could have easily had the Joker as one of them, the guy in the hood and all the rest of you just replace that. Um, Colin has asked, do you know why John Eston took over from Frank Gorshin? Uh, I might remember, but I don't want to say just in case I'm wrong. Um, yeah. I think there might have been an issue with contracts or something like that at the time. The, I think the studio and Frank were having issues uh, and they brought in John. Um, and that was okay. after his time in the Adams Family. I tell you what, Frank Gorshin's portrayal of the Riddler, I really thought he was Looney Tunes the way he portrayed He's like, dude, you've really got a couple of screws loose. So uh, there you go. Um, uh, Daniel, yeah, look, Daniel must have come late to the party. So, yes, we mentioned that uh, Jack Nicholson's was more of a gangster. Um, there you go. Oh, there's a big word for today, anarchists. And uh, oh. Hang on. How do you spell? Can you spell that right? So and, and uh, how do you spell that? Anarchy, archy, archy. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Exactly right. Very good. All right. So um, there we go. That's uh, so. There's jokers out there, and there's probably be more to come. So, uh, but I did notice that no one voted for uh, Jared later. So, which is probably not surprising. Mm. Oh, how good is that? There will there be another Joker soon? It would not surprise me. It's a character that makes money, and if they make money, as we discussed last week, there'll be more movies. So there you go. And good on you. Uh, yes. Sorry, MPS. Uh, I agree. I actually like the uh, the serials as well. The two serials from the forties. And um, yeah, they're quite good. Although, if you ever watch the episodes back to back, right, they go for like three and a half hours or whatever, and it'll just do your heading because every single episode there's a punch up between the bad guys and the good guys, and the story goes off on tangents. And by the time you get like six episodes in, you go, "What was the original problem? I've forgotten." So, but that's time for another story. So there you go. Uh, yes, there we go. John Aston was cast as a Riddler for his performance as Gomez Adams. So yeah. the uh, and yeah, there there may be another Joker with the fact that the new Batman, the Robert Pattinson version, they want to throw a Joker in there as well. It's like, come on, guys, just let the Joker go for a while, bring in some other characters. Batman has probably the largest uh, array of villains uh, that any superhero has. So we keep seeing the same, you know, the Joker and the Penguin and yep. these guys all over again. Let's change it up, do something different. And, you know, there are some other quite good villains out there. Um, I like what Jared asked. Uh, what about Leto? He wasn't too bad. Uh, unfortunately, based on the comments of this uh, episode, uh, he was terrible because no one's voted for him at all. So uh, there you go. And April asked about whether you can get the serials on DVD. You can get one, season, uh, one series only. I think it was, I can't remember if it's the first or the second. I always get it mixed up. But one of them is available officially on DVD. The other one isn't. And you have to find sort of like a um, you know, runoff copy. So there you go. Yeah. Uh, went and saw the old serials sometime. Didn't last the whole thing. Uh, yeah, you're going to love your serials. Yeah, absolutely fantastic. If you want to kill a few hours, that's what you do. Anyway, we're going to move away from the Batman stuff. We're going to go. Uh, it's definitely 9.30, so we're going to buzz off, leave you to it. See you next week. Bring this energy that you got now for next week because uh, it'll be another exciting show. It's Wednesday night. It's nerdy night. You're with us. It's absolutely fantastic, and we're going to leave you all to, to it. So in the interim, make sure you ah, stay nerdy. Okay. Er